Hey everybody, welcome back to Trial and Error. We have a hell of a project today. Um, before we get into that though, I do want to take a quick second and call some attention to the new channel merchandise that I just put out. It is friggin' hilarious. I love it. I think you guys will too. Check it out. If you don't like it, don't buy it. Uh, but I have a feeling some of you will. Um, and uh, I do appreciate any of that merchandise stuff. It really goes a long way to help offset the amount of time I spend editing and doing all this stuff. So with that said, let's talk a little bit about what we're gonna be doing today. Um, Cadillac that we are working on is a 2013 ATS4, um, all loaded up performance package, 3.6 liter, all wheel drive, just to the gills. Um, so we're gonna take a look at the front suspension, uh, just hit 75,000 miles, so we'll get some knocking in the front end, get it up on the lift here, and we can easily identify where that's coming from. Uh, while we're in there, it is not a, I wouldn't say this is an easy task, but it's not overwhelming. Um, there are some things in the design from GM. GM's like that kid that tries really, really hard, um, but doesn't always, it just kind of screws everything up at the end of the day. The suspension is phenomenal in this car, but some of the things that they do either were on purpose to scare us, the consumer, uh, into not tackling the job or just friggin' brain cramps. I mean, who puts a non-removable ball joint on a spindle? You can't change it. You gotta change the whole damn spindle for the ball joint. GM does, that too. Don't get me wrong, I love, I love, I love everything actually. I'm not a real brand loyalist. I think they all make some great cars and they all make some turds. Um, but that's just one of those things you just shake your head at and go, that was either done on purpose to scare us off and you know send it back to the dealer, or it was just an engineer that was a moron. Anyway, while we're in there, um, we're gonna change out uh, the other lower ball joints here. This is one of the rear trailing arms on the lower section of the front suspension. So we're gonna change that out. This is the front trailing arm. I don't think we really need to change this, but again, once, once I'm in there, let's just do it all. We're gonna change it. It's got a big ass bushing in it. We're gonna replace that. Also getting a little bit of whirring on the driver's side. So I picked up a couple of uh, new front bearings. These need to be pulled as part of the process to getting to the spindle, which is why, again, something as simple as a ball joint, that should be a real simple repair. Worst case scenario, it's a press out type of thing. All of a sudden turns into a freaking project, but don't let pulling this scare you. Uh, you will need a puller for it. It's something you can go pick up at Harbor Freight for about 80 bucks. So it's not too, too bad, um, but this is, we're gonna go over this change. This is a bit of a, it's a thing. So we got two of those as well. We're gonna be changing out everything uh, on the lower front suspension of a Cadillac ATS. So with that, let's get into her. Subscribe, or I'm gonna take your 10 millimeter wrenches. By the way, this thing is a friggin' bear. They don't joke, thousand foot pounds, man. Insane. I mean, what's that, three wraps and it's breaking them free at 100 foot-pounds of torque on the lugs? I mean, and these, by the way, these have not come off for at least 35, 40,000 miles. Yeah, they didn't get rotated like they should. Don't blame me, I was in the hospital. Okay. Yeah, you can blame me because I should have changed them after. Yep. Go me one of those days. And when that happens, you throw a lug back on. You break out bad Larry and you try not to ruin your rims. There we go. All right, first thing we'll do is we will remove that massive Brembo brake caliper. Just subscribe! And we're gonna remove the entire caliper bracket. Gonna rig up myself some hanger here for our caliper. Caliper is gonna hang out with its little wang out. So they got a bit of a lock nut here, so we're just gonna tap, tap, tap a There we go. Now go to a little heavier 
screwdriver. Really want to get that right side a little better. There it goes. There it is, much better. Gonna be a 36 mil, and it's gonna be on there pretty good. But luckily we got a thousand foot pounds of freaking torque. Not sponsored by them, by the way. I'm just really impressed with this thing. Although DeWalt, if you're listening, you know, batteries ain't cheap, that's all I'm saying. I know you guys probably know this, but obviously the rotor could come off before you take this off. This has, this nut has nothing to do with that. I just didn't bother taking it off yet. Well, motherfucker. I'm betting this is gonna be a little easier now. Seeing as the damn thing, <laughs> it's already loose. Ugh. Didn't even notice it. It came out so easy, I thought they would have put some anti-seize on there, but they didn't. So now, we're gonna try to get you as best of view of this as I possibly can. But essentially, what we should have behind here is this three, probably. Yeah, it looks like three. Three pretty decent, beefy bolts that hold the uh, hub itself on. And at this point, my microphone cut out, so don't try to line up my lips with this voiceover, because you'll be there all day. Um, at any rate right here, we're just getting the bolts off the back of the hub. So you got those three bolts there. The one that I'm working on now is the toughest one to get to. It's the most forward one. So just used a combination of an extension and a swivel on the end. Still managed to be a pain in the butt, but it is definitely doable. Did you subscribe? Sorry, I paused for a second to drop the plastic shield. That kind of hides a lot of this stuff from you guys. Um, you could probably do this without taking the shield off, but it would be, it'd be kind of a pain. So for those two reasons, I took it off. Yeah, you're gonna spin on me on this side. We got 18 mil. Same thing here. Jesus, that's a long bolt. Because I'm really dumb, I took my new arms, which I'm not gonna put in yet, and I always just put the nuts and the bolts where they go, because in 10 minutes, I will forget. Just like that. When I move, you move. Just like that. When I move, you move. Just like that. Now we freed up our bearing. However, it is still gonna be fused due to rust. Um, although we don't have dissimilar metals here, they're both steel, which is great. A lot of hubs will have dissimilar metals here and you get that additional corrosion, it just locks right in. Um, but not only that, but we're gonna need to press the axle basically through our new bearing to totally remove it. And that's where your puller set comes into play. So we're gonna take the vehicle's normal lug nuts and thread them on. And we're gonna make sure that we center up that center bolt and then we get plenty of thread grab on all three of the lugs because we are definitely going to put a little bit of pressure on them. And I know you guys can't see this but I can literally see the axle CV joint in the back here just backing right out. And usually you've got enough play, especially with the suspension fully extended like it is now, you've usually got enough room here to back that axle right in. But you definitely don't wanna use a power tool on this because you wanna be aware and you wanna feel if you're starting to get some pressure so that you aren't putting a ton of pressure on your CV joints. Okay. And this is where we thread in our slide hammer. So I am going through this step for your benefit only. I don't actually need to remove my uh, bearing from the knuckle or the uh, carrier there because we're replacing both components. They can come out as one, but I just wanted you to see, you know, how to set up your slide hammer and 
um, the kind of the process around that. So you just basically bang the heck out of this thing for a while and it will eventually pop out. You may need to heat it up. That doesn't hurt. Um, but uh, it, depending on, you know, the part of the country you're in and the age of the vehicle, um, you know, some put up a bigger fight than others. You subscribe yet? All right, so we're ready to remove this lower link. Nope, oh, this whole damn thing is spinning within itself. Oh, that's not good. I think I got it. Those little Allen wrenches are great, but when you really need something with some muscle, these guys are the way to go. Focus you. All right, remember always hit the socket, not the ball. Can you tell us this is my wife's car? Ugh. Okay. Oh boy, that's a tight fit. But if it's so just putting a wrench on the back side here, the electric ooga dooga on the front, and that's not gonna fit in there. So, see how she does without the extension. Like a glove. Okay. Try to get this bolt out. Oh, that's nice and easy. Beautiful. And there is that. All right, so after backing these guys out, I want to show you real quick. So we're going to back, we lug a dug at this side off, which they're on there pretty good. But on the other side, you have a splined, whoa. On the other side, you have a spline shaft here. So you want to make sure that you do leave your nuts on the end here so you can give them a couple of wraps. Because who doesn't like a couple of wraps to the nuts? <laughs> All right, so I'm ready to pull out the last pin here. And down she goes. And here I should be able to kind of push that right through. And we are done. Throw these guys back in here. For now, because we're gonna, we're gonna need to take the little splash shield off the old hub, off the old spite spindle, and transfer it over. And I don't want to forget stuff or the direction in which things go, because I'm dumb as a goddamn brick. Right. So now that we are done with the ugly parts, we can start to put on the shiny parts. I'm gonna start off with getting our new spindle in place here. So for this, we're just gonna tap these guys back. Back in most of the way. You can let the nut do the rest of it by pulling it in tight. But you want to make sure you got enough thread there so you don't completely strip that out when you ooga dooga it with your electric ooga dooga. So 
but a quick tip, don't get too excited and try to slide your ABS sensor in before we've assembled the uh, bearing because this does protrude into this cavity. You've got to have that bearing in there first or you will damage it. Bit here, we should be able to work our axle back in. And we'll let it all hang out kind of loose there for the moment. Okay, another one of my famous tips is when you're assembling things like this and you're leaving them, well, you're not leaving them loose, but you're assembling multiple things at the same time. I always try to make sure I remember to leave things, uh, not to thread this all the way down like I could. I want to make it very obvious that I have not gone back and torqued these things. So again, with my memory, if you're like me, so stuff like that can uh, kind of sneak past you at times. So we're gonna leave this stuff very loose until I am ready to crank it down. I almost stepped on my nuts. So we are ready to torque some stuff down. So for this front stabilizer bar, you're gonna want 111 pounds of uh, torque applied to the front bolt here. And I'm not gonna get that obviously out of two wrenches. I just wanted to make sure we were snug there. Thank you, God. Jesus. I always make sure to give the ball joint the uh, Swedish Virgin uh, torque setting. Good and tight. So for the rearward lower link, there's just no way to get a socket in there with the, at least with an all wheel drive version of this car. If you have just the rear wheel drive one, no problem. But for you all wheel drive people, uh, just be ready. Um, if you don't have an open-ended torque wrench, then this may be a problem. Or you can do what I did, because I don't have one, and just doubled up my wrenches to make sure I could put Swedish Virgin level torque on that nut. So now we are ready to press our hub assembly in, get our axle through the center there, but I'm not gonna put the axle nut on here yet. I wanna use this little bit of play that we have. It'll help to make getting those three bolts in and tighten down that uh, affix the hub to the knuckle or spindle um, is a little bit easier. It just gives us a little more room. So all I'm gonna do now is just kind of finger tighten the bolts on the three bolts here behind the spindle into the hub. And then we'll put it up in the air a little higher here and start torquing those three bolts down to, I believe it's 96 foot pounds, you know, give or take. It's nothing important. It's only three bolts that hold your wheel on, you know, nothing serious. One more up top here. That is a pain to get to. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna have to put an extension on and hope. Yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go for the swivel. So you may be asking yourself, hey dummy, why don't you just put the swivel on there in the first place? Well, because swivels can screw up your torque reading. 
So depending on the position in which the swivel happens to be in, it can actually put on a little bit of resistance. So you try to not have to use them. Make sure I got the right size socket here. Is that? Yeah. So you try not to use them when you're torquing things down if you can, if you can help it. But luckily, I don't have a whole lot of angle on the dangle of this thing. So hopefully my torque reading isn't that far off. So now our hub is securely mounted to the spindle here. We have torqued lower rear link, lower front link, both ends tightened and torqued. Checking, double checking. And we're good there. We moved our dust shield over. So really all that's left now is to torque down this front drive shaft here. So I will slide you guys out from under the car along with me and we'll get that done. So how do we properly torque this if the damn thing keeps moving? That's right, get a breaker bar. So there's the old stamping. So we aren't worried about lining that up or anything like that. What's important is you torque the bolt properly. So we're gonna start a new stamp right there. Just like that. This is when you know you're dealing with a high-end car. Fur-lined inner brakes. Check that out. Mouse fur. I'm not joking, this was in the brake rotor. <laughs> it's horrible. I have deferred it like a payment and like removing a mouse. Poor little dude. You know why I call this stuff Annie C's? Because it says so right on the package. The reason I do that is these things are like famous for corroding in and trying to do a simple brake job. Now you're drilling out a damn bolt. Eh. Torque, eh. pounds. All right, so all we gotta do now is just tighten down our brake caliper, technically our brake caliper bracket. So we tighten these to more than enough foot pounds, of course. I don't know what that is in Newton meters. I think it's more than enough Newton meters. Don't quote me. There we go. So that's the job. Uh, obviously, I still just need to bolt the wheel on. I'm not gonna do that yet because I still have all this plastic and uh, splash shields undone under the car and I still need to go do the other side. But in terms of instruction goes on the process, uh, I, to my knowledge, there is no other videos on the ATS. Tons of information on the CTS, no information on the ATS. Obviously, the ATS is a newer car, hasn't been around that long. Um, but although I say that, this is a 2013, this is the first year it came out. Um, loved it from the second it came out. My wife loved it, I should say. That's why I bought her this as a Christmas present uh, a ways back. So with that said, um, that's the job. Hopefully you don't have to do all of the things I had to do on this one. Uh, but if you do, that's what it looks like. Or if you just need the bearing, you know, from this, hopefully it gives you guys kind of an idea of what you're getting yourself into. It is not that bad. Don't mind the sweat. I forgot to turn my garage air conditioning on while I was at work today, so now I'm home after work and it's cooling down, but it's still toasty. I'm not complaining about a giant garage with a two post lift and air conditioning. Don't get me wrong. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Any questions, comments, concerns, and or criticisms, put them down in the comment section below me. And as always, have a great day.